seconds out, round seven. Hello there. The EU is saying that the next round of talks will be a shadow boxing affair before the main event. Please today reflect that this is VJ Day and is the 75th anniversary of the day that Imperial Japan surrendered, marking the real end to the Second World War on the 15th of August 1945. Please remember all those who suffered and died for our freedoms. So if the next round of talks, that's round seven by the way, that are due to start in Brussels next week are going to be a mere shadow boxing event, then what have we been engaging in over the last four years? Tea parties, maybe? With cucumber sandwiches? Actually, the Scotsman newspaper called the talks shadow boxing back on the 21st of January when it said, Brexit, ominous signs as Boris Johnson and EU begin shadow boxing. Boris Johnson may discover the UK is a lightweight up against a heavyweight in post-Brexit trade talks with the EU. Going on in colourful tone to say... In the blue corner, Boris Johnson is probably still full of pep, enthusiastically showing off his Get Brexit Done boxing gloves. In the Brussels corner, there is just an empty stool, but it is enormous. Hmm... Wonder if they're that sure right now. Anyway, the Telegraph reports that an EU source said, Both sides have moved closer together, but we see this round as laying the foundations for future breakthroughs. Imagine two fencers sizing each other out, or two fighters shadow boxing before the real engagement begins. So what are the two sides talking about next week? Oh, and we're sending 50 negotiators to Brussels, despite Belgium now being on the UK quarantine red list. Anyway, let me run through the itinerary, and please let me know if you've heard any of this before. They start with the two chief negotiators, that's the UK's David Frost and the EU's Michel Barnier, meeting on Tuesday for a chief negotiator's dinner. Then on Wednesday, the two teams are meeting to discuss Level playing field for open and fair competition Horizontal arrangements and governance Fisheries Trade in goods Law enforcement and judicial cooperation Mobility and social security coordination Participation in union programmes Transport, road and aviation then on Thursday, it's pretty much the same. More level playing field for open and fair competition. More fisheries. Oh, the EU does love to talk about fisheries, doesn't it? Trade in services and investment and other issues. Law enforcement and judicial cooperation. Energy. Mobility and social security coordination. Governance for aviation and Governance for Social Security Coordination. All sounds like the last few sets of talks where nothing was agreed, or virtually nothing. Then on Friday it's a chief negotiator's breakfast and maybe a plenary session with all the negotiators. I wonder if that's a full English breakfast. Anyway, in a series of tweets, the UK negotiator David Frost has said... Looking forward to going to Brussels next week for round seven of the UK-EU negotiations with EU Commission's Michel Barnier. As always, we go in good faith to talk constructively about all the issues. Our assessment is that agreement can be reached in September and we will work to achieve this if we can. As we keep saying, we are not looking for a special or unique agreement. We want a deal with, at its core, a free trade agreement like those the EU has agreed with other friendly countries like Canada. The UK sovereignty over our laws, our courts or our fishing waters is of course not up for discussion and we will not accept anything which compromises it, 
just as we aren't looking for anything which threatens the integrity of the EU's single market. That neatly sums up the UK position. So why all this continual talking about level playing fields, fisheries and the like? We'll run our own playing field, thank you very much, and let the EU know how much access to our waters their trawlers can have. The only troubling point for Brexiteers should be that the UK has now accepted that there will be one overarching treaty for the whole agreement. And it is unclear to me whether that also includes the emotive matter of fishing rights. And then there's the matter of state aid, something that Brussels is absolutely petrified of letting the UK have a free handover. The EU state aid rules are there to stop EU member states getting one over on each other using their own government intervention, unless it is approved by Brussels of course. The EU should have zero control over how a third country, such as the UK, conducts its own state aid affairs. If we in the UK decide we need to support a business, then we should just do it and no one should have any power over us. Now one thing here may be the possible use of state aid to offset EU import tariffs for some of our exporters. You know, giving certain industries tax breaks, for example, so they can lower their prices to make their exports more attractive price-wise, even with Brussels charging tariffs to let them be imported into their single market. So the EU having control over UK state aid would ensure something like that never happened. Now I'm not sure on the legality of or otherwise in international law of such a tariff dodging arrangement. But I'm sure that there are some very clever lawyers out there who could set up something similar. And that probably gives the Eurocrats a few nightmares. Anyway, as this is going to be a shadow boxing affair, well according to Brussels anyway, I would expect to see the usual no progress press releases next Friday. Then the inevitable talk from the press about leaving the Brexit implementation period without a deal on WTO terms and how awful it will all be. But if you recall, there has been talk that in reality, good progress is being made and that they're just picking the right moment to drop the disappointing news on us. But if that disappointing news means that the UK has full control over fisheries, laws, border, money, security, defence and foreign policy, then Brexiteers will be very happy, despite any tariffs or other restrictions. Because tariffs and restrictions can be further negotiated over time. But as we so recently found out, negotiating your sovereignty away at the start and then trying to get it back later is the most devilish of tasks. That's why it's heartening to see David Frost tweeting out ahead of this seventh round of talks that there will be no compromises on sovereignty and independence. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the merchandise link in the descriptions box below. So what do you think about these Brexit talks? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.